Hello all. Uh, in this session, we are going to understand design of wound rotors. So, when you are designing wound rotors, there are main four important points which you have to consider. First point is number of rotor slots, uh, number of rotor turns, uh, area of rotor conductors, and rotor windings. So, let us focus on first point and comment on uh, rotor slots. So, there are three main points when you are going to design rotor slots. So, these rotor windings are generally three phase uh, because we are focusing mainly on three phase induction motors. And rotor slots should be chosen in such a manner that balanced winding is obtained. So, nature of current flowing through that must be sinusoidal. So, you should avoid uh, bringing some non sinusoidal nature in parameters of induction motor. And for that, your winding has to be uh, chosen as a balanced winding. Uh, or uh, your rotor slots should be chosen in such a way that you are getting balanced winding. That is first important point. The second point, uh, you are having two options when you are choosing slots for uh, wound rotor induction motor. First is you can have an integral number of slots per pole per phase or you, are, you can have a fractional slots. But the important point is when you are having fractional slots, your slots must be multiple of phases and pair of poles in the uh, rotor. So that is important point. So let us move to the next point which is number of rotor turns. Now uh, for this uh, you have to uh, consider uh, analogy with your uh, transformer and uh, you can understand uh, transformer primary is equivalent to uh, stator of induction motor and transformer secondary is equivalent to uh, rotor of induction motor. Now uh, when you want to keep your uh, rotor voltage in induction motor uh, under acceptable limit. Uh, so you have to consider uh, effective stator to rotor turns. Uh, uh, those are must be those must be properly uh, adjusted. And uh, the main important point uh, we have to consider is when the rotor of wound rotor induction motor is at rest, the voltage between sleep rings is maximum. So it's a kind of no load and when you are putting some load then you are going to reduce that voltage. Now uh, there are some limits design point of view on the rotor voltages. So two kind of motors you can consider. One is uh, for small machines and another is for high voltage machines. So when your machine is small kind of a 500 volt uh, you have to keep uh, your voltage as minimum as possible across your sleep rings. So this is in view of uh, you know protecting the person who is operating the motor if there are some hand operations like starters or uh, as well uh, uh, you have to consider what is the protection which is applied to your brush gear also. So sometimes it may happen your brush gear protection is not perfect. So if your voltages across these uh, slip rings in small motors are not within limits uh, the person may get shock. So that is important point. Another point you have to consider is whenever your voltages are going to increase, your insulation is simultaneously going to increase. So to control that, uh, you have to choose uh, your stator to rotor effective turn ratio in such a way that uh, your voltages are under uh, limits when you are considering small motors. But when you are switching to large motors uh, at the other end, uh, when you are applying same criteria to uh, large motors, for same power, when you are choosing low voltage, your current will be higher and then that is going to be the challenge. So for higher voltages uh, or for larger machines, you have to keep uh, voltages high to uh, control your currents and uh, also conductor sections will be limited. Why? Because you are going to reduce your current. Another benefit of that is when you are keeping your current under control, uh, your design of sleep rings or brushes or uh, starter mechanisms becomes easy because the all for all these things the criteria for designing is always what is the starter current or what is the overall current or what is the larger current. Then uh, these are typically applied to voltage ranges are 1000 volt to 2000 volt and uh, it is generally uh, ensured that for these higher voltages machines or a large machines your brush gear is always protected properly. So there is no question of the getting shocks as well. Many of the times, uh, I'll share you a field experience also. Many of the times, these large machines are generally operated with the help of automations, uh, 
generally operated from uh, control rooms so there is no question of going um, and uh, handling these uh, starters for these machines uh, manually except some few cases but most of the times they are operated by automation so there is no question of uh, human safety so that is the important point so let us move, move to some uh, mathematics related with this uh, rotor turns uh, as you are aware this we have done in transformers also many of the time so es by er is nothing but kw is the, the here there is addition for induction motors here you have to consider winding factor for stator winding factor for rotor so this is the ratio the simple concept is uh, voltage is directly proportional to turn so es by er is nothing but kws into ts divided by kwr into tr so how you can write down the rotor turns per phase i would like to uh, just make you alert these all quantities are per phase so this is turns per phase as well your stator voltage is also per phase this might be useful when you are solving some numerical related with that so tr becomes your kws by kwr into er by es into ts so i'll i'll repeat uh, just check whether this formula are correct or not your tr by ts uh, will be kwr tr by kws ts will be equal to er by es so how you can solve this tr will be equal to kws by kr into er by uh, es into ts so that is correct so this ts by tr you are going to take at this side and this es by er you are going to take at this side that's it and then you are going to calculate number of turns in the rotor now in case of small machines uh, uh, as we have seen limits you can see uh, 500 volts so there may be two kind of connections one is uh, delta another is star and you are aware when it is delta connection your whole voltage will be applied across leap rings so for delta connected uh, your er limit will be 500 volts for star connected machines your er limit will be 500 by root 3 because it is star connection so after this let us move to next point which was area of rotor conductors and uh, it's a very simple thing uh, we have earlier in some of the videos we have already seen your uh, rotor emf is 85 percent of stator emf you can refer my earlier videos so uh, how you can write down mmf stator uh, rotor mmf is ampere turn so it is ir into tr which is 0.85 times is into ts so your ir is going to be 0.85 is ts divided by tr so why we have calculated this ir because always while deciding area we have to consider a current density that is standard rule so current density for rotor conductor is chosen almost equal to the stator to avoid excessive excessive uh, rotor uh, copper loss that is important thing and there are two types of conductors when uh, you are considering small motors you have to consider a round conductors and when you are considering uh, large motors you are going to consider bar conductors that is important point now uh, last point of this discussion which is rotor windings so you can categorize motor into two parts one is small motors and large motors and here i have mentioned some important points uh, small motors you are going to have mesh winding and slots are semi enclosed slots so what is this mesh winding or what is this double layer winding we are going to understand separately in one of the videos but for the sake of time you can understand this so small motors uh, this is a type of winding which is mesh winding we are going to apply uh, so what happens generally when semi enclosed slots are over there your windings are roughly uh, wound outside and they are put slot slot by slot inside so uh, and because uh, you have to control your uh, area of conductors because your slots are semi enclosed when your area of conductor you have to control you have to increase your amount of current that depends upon current density calculation and then because your current is going to increase you have to apply n number of parallel uh, paths so thus several wires in parallel per turns are used so rotor is star connected and three leads are brought through the shaft to the slip ring so this is characteristic of slip ring induction motor now for large motors you are going to use double layer bar type wave winding so this winding is generally uh, is having a two bars per slot and they are pushed and bent uh, at other end so for large motors uh, because this is bar type uh, winding now uh, sometimes for motors which are greater than 750 kilowatt your bars uh, 
will be more than two, which is a uh, four bars per slots are used, and uh, because your bars are going to increase, your current handled by each slip ring is reduced because you are provide providing uh, a number of parallel bars. And this typical uh, slots which uh, which are having four bars per slot, or in general, uh, when windings are having more than two bars per slot, these windings are called parallel windings and are generally wave out so i'd like to just revise what we have understood in this uh, particular session we have understood four important points related with design of wound rotors first point is number of slots how we are going to choose uh, how we are going to calculate number of rotor turns uh, how to uh, calculate area of rotor conductors or how to choose area of rotor conductors and last one is some comments on rotor windings of considering small motors and large motors. Thank you.